Alrighty Lumberjacks, welcome back. And today we're going to be going over the operation of the Grapple Skidder. Uh, the purpose of the Grapple Skidder is to bring the already cut wood from out in the bush towards the landing area. And this area that we've set up here is the landing area. So as I showed in the last video, um, the buncher has the ability to rip up the ground and the brush. So as you saw when I drug the head over the ground, it tore up the... Uh, it tore up the, the little sticks and it tore up the, the bushes and stuff to clear it. The other option that you can use if you want is the in-game um, painting system. So if you hit shift and P, as in Peter on your keyboard, um, it'll bring up this kind of uh, little interactive menu. So if you go over to the landscaping tab, uh, go over to painting, and you can choose a ground type that you want. So I usually choose just kind of the muddy ground type because that works good for me. And then you can change the sizes using M and N on your keyboard. So usually what I'll do is I'll just kind of paint out an area where I want the, the logs to lay, kind of our landing area. And just eh, do your thing. It's not, uh, it's not Bob Ross here, but you can just kind of, you know, paint out a nice little area here. So roughly this is kind of where I want to put my wood... Um, and load it roughly. So, um, as I explained in the last video, <clears throat> we kind of went over how the logs should sit. So now the distance from the road to the initial pile is going to be determined based on the size of wood that you actually want to um, process. Now in the processing video, we're going to go over lengths, but it's important to know this step when you start skidding because you need to know uh, what distance you're going to be working. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to be doing both long logs and short logs. So if you have long logs, the distance from your pile to the road needs to be longer. If you have short logs and you're only doing short logs, the distance from your pile to the road can actually be shorter, determined based on your size of logs. So if you're unsure of what your plan is, I usually give myself about a distance from the road itself to the pile about what you're looking at right here. Enough to fit a long log or a short log or whatever you want. So that's a good distance to, to have a starting area. So now what we're going to do is we're going to hop in the skidder. So the grapple skidder is fitted with this large grapple on the backhand side, um, which opens up to a very large uh, spacing so that you can grab and hold trees in this grapple. Now, with these grapples, um, they are a little bit different uh, based on the way that they are set up with this game. So, these grapples have the ability to rotate. So, as you can see on the very top, there's that little yellow uh, piece that slides back and forth. So, as long as you keep that little yellow square lined up with the other yellow square about there, um, your, your grapple set where it should be. So... These, these grapples have the ability to freely turn, but not exactly like real life. So as you turn that grapple, you'll see it finally starts to kind of turn, but it's very, very slow, and you may need to make some minor adjustments. But if you keep that uh, yellow square about in the center, it's usually right where you need it to be for, um, for hauling the trees out of the bush. Uh, so you have different views. You have your in-cab view, which is uh, fairly easy to see. You also have your uh, boom cam, which lets you see um, the backside of your machine while you're working. And then you have your third person view, which lets you see the whole machine. So when we're pulling wood in from the bush, we're going to want to usually back in. You don't have to go in straight. So let's line up with the road, put her in reverse, and we want to back right up to this pile. Generally, I want to pull the piles uh, in the direction closest to the actual main deck or our main pile. So over here is our main deck down in the bottom here. So I wouldn't want to grab the pile on the left first because I would have to cross the other pile. So instead what I would rather do is I'd rather grab the pile that is closest to that deck. So we're going to back up here. And again, if you back up as straight as possible to the pile, that's the best way to do it. So keeping your machine, whether you're at an angle or not, doesn't matter. As long as the back end is straight with that pile, you can open up your grapple and back right up until you're right about, I would say, there. That's probably a good spot. So looking at it from the outside, 
you want to keep a little bit of a little bit of the wood on the inside of the grapple just so it doesn't slip out and uh, that's usually the best we can even back up a little bit more here if we want so let's go like about there how about that so once you get a, a good distance the key is you don't want any of this wood going underneath the skitter you want to keep a little bit of a distance so that it has room to swing um, if you have it right butted up against the back end of the skitter when you go to turn it won't turn so once you get that lined up close your claw it'll roll all the logs up into the grapple or should if they're in a half decent position which i think we didn't get them all here hold on sometimes you got to do a little re-grab until it's happy um, once you get them rolled up into the grapple and we didn't get them all because this is a bit of a smaller grapple if you hit L on your keyboard, it'll actually engage a locking strap, which you'll see see that orange piece that wraps around in the grapple there. So once that's on there, it'll stop the logs from slipping out of the grapple while you're driving. So then all you gotta do is put it in forward, drive up. So what I like to do is I drive right alongside my pile if I'm in line with it. So I'll go right into the woods here a little bit, driving through my, my branches just a teeny bit. And then as you come through, you can actually see this will be lined up pretty close to where we want it here. Um, so it's a little bit off kilter to what I want. So I'm going to back it up. So as long as you get it close to the front of the deck, about there. So I'm going to unlock the load. Open up my grapple and just dump it right there. So now what you're going to see is when you dump it, um, the trees still aren't in a nice line. They're kind of They're kind of off to the side there. So if you look from here... Um, you see how we want them all as straight as possible in this deck, but as you can see, it's kind of at a 45 degree angle, which is not really ideal. So what you can do is use the blade of your skitter to push that into uh, a nice line. So what we're going to do uh, is lower the blade. Also, it's always good to keep your grapple closed when you're traveling around. It keeps it from flopping around really bad. Um, so we're going to lower our blade, and we want it low enough where it's just touching the ground, lifting up the machine just a teeny, teeny bit, not a lot. Because you don't want it, like, so low that it's uh, lifting the machine directly off the ground. So once it's low enough, you feel comfortable with where it's at, you can actually start to drive into the tops of the pile. And watch out for stumps, because those are a reality. And then as you drive into the pile, it'll actually start to push the logs nice and straight for us. And then you can you can look at the front of your pile and kind of check. Oh, okay, it looks a little bit better. You know what? Maybe I pushed it a little too far. I'm going to go back and make a little adjustment here. Because then you can actually drive forward and push into the front of the pile. And I can see there's some stumps down there. So you got to be really careful with that. Because what will happen sometimes is your machine will get hung up on those stumps. So sometimes it's best to clear them out. And you can push that pile right up in there. The, uh, the more tight and packed the piles, uh, usually the... The better the the spacing so you can just get everything shoved right up there perfect and then you got room for another skid okay so keeping as the skidder operator keeping the piles nice and straight is always a bonus again as you see these stumps pieces on the ground uh, i don't know if i'll catch it here but i'm gonna try uh so if you're driving with the blade down you can see this in kind of invisible stump popping in out here but there's clearly a stump there that i'm hitting so you can either clear that with the tree grinder or you can clear it with um, the lumberjack mod or whatever you use uh, to get rid of that. So there's this little piece here that we left behind because we didn't have enough room in our grapple. So we're going to go back and we're just going to scoop that up and add it to the pile. And just this little piece. I use that locking strap as much as I possibly can because it keeps it from slipping out of the grapple. If you don't use the locking strap, there's a strong possibility it will slip out of the grapple. And again, we're going to kind of come at an angle here. You can also turn kind of like I just did at a more of a, a sharper 90 kind of degree. And back that right into that pile. And you can turn. Again, you guys will figure out your best comfortable techniques. I've noticed everybody that drives the skidder seems to have a different style the way they operate. Um, and different ways that they, they process and drop the wood as well. So we're going to go back. We're going to do the same thing. This is a bit of a smaller pile, so we shouldn't have an issue with um, with it hanging up. And we kind of grabbed it a little close there. Um, so you know what? Sometimes I actually prefer to re-grab. So I'll back up a little further if I feel like I don't have enough of a bite on it. 
Again, you wanna have a little bit of a neck, right? I always call it just a little bit of a neck so that you're grabbing down a little bit. If you grab everything right at the tip, you're gonna have a way higher percent chance of losing your logs. Um, so that that's like the perfect amount to make a nice little grab. And then you wanna lift it up off the ground just a little bit, like about there's so comfortable. And then lock that stuff up and then go for the drive. And again, what you can also do um, is you can kind of come in at a, if you gotta come in at a sharper angle, you can, you just turn the head. You don't have to turn it, like it'll automatically turn to that 90 degrees. And you can actually just back up straight to that pile, especially if a machine's working or something and you need that space. And then just dump it right on in there. Um, I do quite a bit of correcting with my, uh, with my blade as well. If I really need to push up the piles, um, I do so with that blade down below, because it's really, really handy to be able to push up the edges of stuff and just keeps it all nice and clean. All right. Okay, so yeah, that's basically the operation of the skitter. Again, keeping your grapple closed while you drive around is always a bonus. Um, it's mostly used for dragging logs, but you can also use it for pushing piles, cleaning stuff up, um, and you know, whatever other creative stuff you guys come up with. But that's the basic operation of the skitter. Uh, there's also winch skitters as well, um, which have the ability to winch the logs uh, from the back side of the skitter. Um, I'm not going to be covering winch skitters in this series. Um, that's something you guys, it's a really, really simple process. And it still follows the exact same rules that we are teaching in this video. All right, guys. So the next video, we are going to be going over the processor and uh, the best alignments and positions for the processor. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.